the clock is still ticking. You still have 24 hours in any given day, but our relationship with time, our perception of time, our ability to dilate that time and enjoy life in that time, that's on us. Welcome to Commune. We are on a mission to inspire, heal, and bring the world closer together. I want to thank you for joining me in this course. Uh, I want to welcome you. My name is Dr. Pedram Shojai. Uh, for those of you who don't know my background, I'm a New York Times bestselling author of The Urban Monk, The Art of Stopping Time, and Inner Alchemy. My books are in over 30 languages, and um, this is what I do. I was a Taoist monk for a number of years. I studied with the Dalai Lama, the Karmapa Lama. I've studied with a lot of people up in the Himalayas. Uh, came back and decided to transition from ascetic to householder. What does that mean is, you know, living up in a temple, doing the temple thing, instead living the lives of a normal person so that I can relate with how the people um, on this planet, most of them, the 99.9% the .9 are living with daily stresses, mortgages, cars, all those things. And how do we take what I learned up there and implement it in the lives that need it most? right here. And that became the basis of The Urban Monk. Um, I am a film producer. I've done several films. I've done a lot of media. Uh, and I live in the world. So everything that I teach has been tested in real life, not just me, but tens of thousands of my students and my patients. And I'm a doctor of oriental medicine, and I've just, I've been in the game for a very long time. I have a very no-nonsense approach. And this curriculum of the art of stopping time really has to do with digging in the, the, the field of your life and finding the gold nuggets, the places where you've just left energy, time, money, efficiency, and happiness just there in the field. So every day we're going to cover an aspect of your life from the morning where you wake up to just your rituals of making your coffee and your tea, uh, your morning commute how you interact with your environment at work, with the people at work, what you do in your evenings, how, how you take your showers. I mean, there's all these areas of your life that have uh, time being dumped into them uh, without a lot of consciousness, especially meals, right? So we're gonna look at all of these areas and find places where you can bring your consciousness back to the party so that you can be aware, present, and alive in the living, breathing moment. And what you'll find is it's not time that's the problem, it's your consciousness your cadence, your velocity that's askew, that's taking on more items than it can in time, that's saying yes to too many things instead of curating a life garden and the way that you would actually uh, mindfully address this thing called time. So after this journey, you're going to be better at curating and setting the table of your life so you're not tumbling down the white water, but you're navigating with more clarity, more precision, more consciousness, and more happiness. Okay, so let's go. Hello and welcome to The Art of Stopping Time. I'm Dr. Pedram Shojai and I am here to spend the next 10 days with you on a journey. On a journey through time, but your time. Not some far off concept of time, but the time that you have in your life and looking at how we're going to reallocate it in a way that's going to suit you how it's going to benefit you. Uh, right now, you look at the world we live in, most people are suffering from something I call time compression syndrome, which means too many commitments stacked on too little time, which leads to stress. Uh, stress is something that has been plaguing our culture. You are probably no stranger to stress and time compression, but the real question is, what can I do about it? You know, How do I optimize my lifestyle so I have more value coming out of the time that I have. Look, the, the clock is still ticking. You still have 24 hours in any given day, but our relationship with time, our perception of time, our ability to dilate that time and enjoy life in that time, that's on us, right? And so that's what we're gonna do for the next 10 days. That's the journey we're gonna to take together. Uh, and it's really important to understand how the body and the mind are reflected um, in this equation because we have our nervous system, which has the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And we're gonna to have to just get into this for a second because it's really important for you to understand this kind of binary switch that happens. Look, I didn't make the rules, this is how it works. We need to understand how to leverage our 
physiology, our neurophysiology at that, to really stay in this sweet spot uh, because when we are in sympathetic, what that means is we are in fight or flight, we are in a stress mode, which has been very, very uh, useful in our evolutionary upbringing because when we step on the branch uh, and we are afraid, we're not just afraid of the noise, we're afraid of the, the branch sound that comes when a predator is coming, right? Because if we hear that branch, it means a big animal's around and if that big animal's coming for me, I'm dead, right? And so fight or flight kicks in, all the blood, we need to understand what happens here, all the blood that is freely flowing through the system gets reallocated away from the prefrontal cortex, away from the digestive tract to the muscles that are gonna get you in or out of a situation to save your life. Really important, we need that. That is not supposed to be operating more than say one to 3% of the time. Our ancestors had to run for their lives, but if they did that every day, they wouldn't live very long, right? That was there in case of an emergency. What's happened now is the world we live in is, it's nuts, right? There's too many stressors, too many things that are pushing on us for our time, our, our energy, and also just our attention, right? So before, you know, when food wasn't there, we'd know about it, we'd go hunting and gathering. Today you get some mystery bill that lands, you open up an envelope, and you go into the sympathetic overdrive. There are so many things that drive us into this, this area of our nervous system which doesn't suit us. It's not where we want to live, right? Think of it as wartime economy. Now, what's the peacetime economy? What happens in peacetime economy? We have money for books, we have money for roads, we have money for hospitals, we have money for education. Think of that as the parasympathetic nervous system, right? That is your rest and digest nervous system. The way we're set up, the way we're wired is either you're in one or the other. So what's it gonna be? Your perception of time is very different when you are in sympathetic nervous system. You are stressed, you are compressed, you are not able to focus, you're not able to make good decisions versus when you're resting, relaxed, and able to make decisions out of duress. So what we're gonna work on over the next 10 days is looking at your life and looking at little places inside of your day to bring back your awareness, bring back your consciousness and to constantly rewire your brain, your nervous system, and frankly, your operating system to go to this place and stay in this place. And it's gonna take, look, it's gonna take more than 10 days to really reinforce this habit. But what we're gonna do is reinforce at least 10 little areas of it in your life over the next 10 days so that you start to build a bridge, you start to build the tendency and habits to move back towards this place where things just work better. So why do we wanna live there? When we are in sympathetic overdrive, our genes are expressing in a way that leads to more inflammation. More inflammation leads to less longevity and less ability to make good decisions in life, right? Most of our health decisions actually happen at the grocery store or at the dinner table, right? Well before they become healthcare crises issues. This part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex is responsible for higher moral reasoning and negation of impulses, our higher cognitive function. This is the part of the brain that stops getting blood, oxygen, and energy when you are in the sympathetic nervous system overdrive. So again, let's flip that switch, let's start bringing, let's start irrigating that part of the brain so next time you're sitting there at dinner and someone pulls out the, you know, the double fudge cake, you have the wherewithal to be like, mm, no, no. Or more importantly, in context of what we're talking about here, if you already have a certain amount of commitments in time, and someone comes up and says, hey, guess what, you know, Johnny's in town and you know, let's all go to dinner and do this thing and you already had plans. You were gonna go to the gym, you were gonna hang out with your kids, you were gonna read that book, you were gonna do whatever it was that you already said yes to. You said yes to something in time and now something else shows up 
And by you saying yes to this new thing, effectively, you're now saying no to the things you had already committed to, and you are sitting there in some sort of time syntax error, if you will. You are no longer in integrity because you have now committed two things on the same timeline. Which one are you gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna try to do both. You know it doesn't work. It creates stress and it creates problems with your relationships. So in that moment, you can be like, ah, yeah, you know what, I'm so sorry, I, I already have plans tonight, right? Or at least you start to renegotiate and you move things around because you really wanna see Johnny, but you think about it before you just throw yourself in. You can't push your chips in to two events in the same timeline at the same time and not be stressed out. That's called time compression. So that's what we're gonna work on because the overall overarching thought, and this is, you know, I talk about this a lot in my books, is this concept of energy economics. You have a certain amount of energy that's required of you every single day just to run, right? Just to get through my day. I got to get up. I got to get the kids to school. I got to go to the office. You know, even if I do a mediocre job, let's just say I need six bars of energy, right? Uh, and my lifestyle is getting me to the point where I'm living right on that bread line, right? So if I start to become more efficient and bring more energy up, let's say I'm doing yoga practices, let's say I'm starting to eat better, I have a little bit more energy to use, right? Uh, if I become a little less efficient, then I'm dragging. So in this concept of energy economics, really time, money, and energy are interchangeable in our world in a lot of ways because you'll trade your time for money, you'll trade your energy for money, you'll use energy during time. So if you start to look at these things on a continuum and think about the things that you're stressed out about the most, time, money, and energy, uh, there's, there's a correlation, right? And so we're gonna explore that for the next 10 days and we're gonna really start to look at time as the currency of life. Um, if you run out of money, you can make more. Uh, you run out of energy, you go to sleep, you get more energy, you eat, there's calories, there's ways to do it. If you run out of time, you're done. Right, And so what do we need to understand about time? And how do we start to look at time differently so that we can take the most precious resource, I mean the currency of life, the gift of life itself, is the time we have here on this planet. The time we have in these bodies, the time we have with our families, our loved ones, to fulfill our missions, whatever it is. How do I take that time back in a meaningful way uh, and still be responsible to my commitments. I mean, I've got a mortgage, I've got car payments, I've got all these things that require output of time just to you know, pay for my life and, and do the things that I'm doing. So how do I look at this in a way that ends up uh, giving me what I need to water this thing called a life garden? And we're gonna talk about this at the end of our 10 days, but I'm gonna kind of plant the seed now, no pun intended, is if you have a garden and you only have room for a certain amount of plants or just kind of areas in your garden where you're watering. So you have your family, you have your health, you have your career, you have your hobbies and your passions, you have the, your desires, the things that you really want in life. Um, how much water do each of these areas need to thrive, right? How much water is in the form of time, energy, and money do you need to put into your family part of your garden to spend time with your kids and, and be with your spouse and, and, and do the things that you need to do to kind of really keep that part of your uh, garden uh, fulfilled and blossoming? For your career, for your health, right? For all of these areas. And then we're, what we're gonna do today as your homework and what we're gonna continue to look at over these next 10 days is your allocation of this, this water, if you will. So most of us will have a lot of water going into our career and you'll have withering plants in your family area. Maybe your kid's in trouble at school, your wife's not getting along with you. You have issues there that need to be addressed, right? Uh, or maybe it's the health. Maybe you've put on 60 pounds and, you're, and your uh, blood sugar is, is out of balance and your doctor's yelling at you, but you know the show must go on. Or maybe you, you're, you're trying to balance all these other things, but your stated goal is to get out into nature Nature more because backcountry backpacking is, is, is your thing. And then the real question is, well, when's the last time you've done that? It's been six years. So how do we water this part of your life so that as you go forward in this thing called time, all of these areas are fulfilled, right? So that's what we're going to look at over the next few days. And we're going to take very specific areas of your life and just see if we could eke out a little bit more efficiency. This idea of time management 
is really kind of misunderstood, I think, in the West. It's really about event management, uh, saying no to things so that you can say yes to the things or continue to say yes to the things that you've already said yes to, but also saying yes to yourself, saying yes to your life garden and really curating it so that you are consciously spending your time and allocating your time, your precious time, to the things that will fulfill you. And yeah, so, you know, touche. It's like, yeah, I have all these things that draw on my time that I can't say no to now. Fine. Let's address those and find efficiency in those. And that's what we're going to do in the next 10 days. Uh, but then let's start to eke out a little bit of efficiency and then reinvest it in the parts of your garden that will fulfill you, that'll make you feel happy, that will make you thrive so that you're not waiting till retirement to enjoy life. You're not waiting till Saturday to catch your breath, right? That's what we're going to do in the next 10 days. And so what we're going to do today is what I call time audit. Let's take a cold, hard look at where it is your time is going. I can't do this homework for you, okay? So this is your homework. Taking a cold, hard look at where you are at. So let's look at the categories. We obviously have our morning routine. Like, so you wake up in the morning, what are you doing, right? What's your breakfast routine? How are you, you know, spending time in the car? What's your commute look like? What do your breaks look like? Your, your meal time, your lunch, your dinner, right? And so what I want you to do is get a journal that you're gonna hang on to for the next 10 days. And every 15 minutes, get into your phone and set a timer to go off every 15 minutes, okay? This is gonna, this is gonna feel annoying at first, but trust me, I've been doing this for years. You won't remember where 15 minutes of your day went three hours from now right? So every 15 minutes, just have the timer go off. And look, we're not trying to correct or fix anything right now. Today, we are just diagnosing, right? We're doing your time audit and you're the only one that can do it. So the timer goes off 15 minutes after you wake up, just stop for, it's like, it takes less than a minute and just write down what it is that you did. Literally, just specifically, got up, went to the bathroom, five minutes in the bathroom, 15 minutes in the shower, 30 minutes doing this, and just every 15 minutes, just write down in a running log, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be organized, just vomit it onto the page. Let us capture between today and the next time I see you on video, capture what your day looked like, 15 minutes at a time, all the way through so that when we come back to this tomorrow, you're going to be able to see where maybe we can find some efficiencies, where maybe you're being a little decadent or frivolous or mindless with your time, because that's where we're gonna start, right? We're gonna start helping you find the time. You're saying, oh, I never have time to relax. Let's find it in your day. There's 24 hours. I promise you, we're gonna find all kinds of time that we can kind of rattle free and give back to you. So I'll be back tomorrow uh, with day two. And uh, while we're at this, you are taking your notes, you are journaling. Jump into the commune community and start to share your insights with everyone else. You looked at your day in 15 minute increments yesterday. What did you find? right? So what I want you to do is just take a minute right now and run through, if you haven't done so already, and just start to highlight or circle the areas where you're like, eh, yeah, I feel like I was kind of, you know, wasting time here or, you know, oh, I, I spent 25 minutes in the shower, but that's my me time, right? And so these are the things where, you know, look, I'm not, don't, don't clutch at it because I'm not trying to take anything away from you. Frankly, I can't, right? It's your time. It's your day. Let's just look at it right? Let's look at what happened in your time audit and just start circling the areas where you're like, yeah, you know, here, I think I was a little inefficient. I spent, you know, a total of, you know, once I circle all the Instagram or Facebook up, and maybe you do that right now, is just go to all the places where you were on social media, minute here, two minutes there, see how much it adds up. You'd be surprised. Uh, you know what? The average right now is over an hour in westernized societies, right? Over an hour of social media. Well, there's your yoga time. There's your nap time right there, right? We consider that downtime, but is it really? Let's not uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe it's doing something for you. But right now, let's just take an accurate accounting, right? Let's assess where that time went. So go ahead and do so. And then when you're done, uh, just pause my video. And when you're done, come right back.
All right, welcome back. I hope you learned something from that. We're gonna talk about it as we go through, but listen, it's it's your day, it's your time, it's your insights to be gleaned from this. Let's now look at the first part of the day, your morning, right? This is what starts with the alarm clock. This is where everything gets going, and this is where a lot of people start to become inefficient, and also not Setting the tone for the day can be really dangerous, right? So if I wake up to an alarm clock and I just kind of tumble into the white water of my day and then kind of look up next and be like, oh, it's lunchtime and look up next and be like, I'm in the car and look up next and say, wow, it's time to go to bed. Uh, that's not really a fulfilling day, right? That's not what I got into this life game for, but you know what? That tends to happen more often than not, right? Uh, maybe maybe a few more maybe a few more places where you come up for air, right? But the day just kind of keeps going. So how do we set the intention? How do we set the mindfulness and the tone for really understanding how this day is going to flow, so that instead of being in the white water, basically upside down, I can be on a raft riding and I can kind of navigate to still water where I need to, but still ride out my day and not just you know disengage, right? I understand. Your life requires energy. Your life requires time and commitment and focus. Now, where can we get some of that back to gather our breath, to catch our breath and really gather our energy and our wits so that we can make better decisions and we can navigate this, this thing called today in a healthier fashion, right? So what happens? First thing we do when we wake up, most people, we go to the bathroom, right? So what's happening in there? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Instagram? Are you reading a magazine? Are you reading the news? I don't know, you know, right? What did you do yesterday? What is that routine that you're doing in the bathroom, right? Then you go down, is it, you know, is, is there like breakfast being prepared? Are you making coffee in the morning? What's happening there and where can we hack into that, right? One of my favorites is every time you put on the coffee maker, that's your time to stretch. Right? Or if you're blending your, your smoothie in the morning, that's your time to stretch. Let's find areas of your day where you are waiting or where uh, time is a little more idle and then build in, I don't know, 10 breaths, uh, stretching your chest, stretching your hips, all of these little areas where you can build in some micro habits while something else is happening. So a coffee maker or a blender, great examples. That's your stretching time this morning. At least start stretching and working yourself into a, a habit that'll then start to stick. What else are you doing in the morning? From the time you step into that kitchen, from the time you start to get going, you start to get dressed, you're lacing up your shoes, you're getting the kids ready, where is the efficiency? And look, and frankly, look, I got two young kids, I get it. You get up and it just, it's going, right? So what I do is I'll wake up, I'll set my alarm to get up at least 30 minutes before the pandemonium starts. And so I will start to do my conscious breathing, I will start to do my energy yoga, which I'm going to teach you today. Uh, and then I will set my intention for the day, right? So one of the most powerful things, and you already have your journal going, what you're going to start on now is your morning routine is just write five things that you are grateful for going into today, right? So set the tone with gratitude and set the tone with mindfulness. Um, what I like to do, and this is... Um, it's a bit uh, harsh for some and it is very easy once you get going, so just trust me on this, is what is the first mindless thing that happens when you get up in the morning? You run to the bathroom, right? So what I like to do is about, it's about a five minute Qigong set. I will show it to you. That's gonna be your homework today that I would like for you to get up and do before you go to the bathroom tomorrow morning, right? Or if you're listening to this in time, before you go to the bathroom, do this mind-body practice, set the tone, gather your wits, your eyes, mind, body, and breath. Bring those together, pull your focus, if you will, and then start your day. So you pull your focus, you, you write down what you're uh, grateful for, and you gather yourself, you gather your breath, then as I'm dressing, I'm more mindful, as I'm showering, I'm more mindful. And as I'm getting ready to leave the house, I'm more mindful. So what's your routine getting into the shower? 
while you're in the shower, how much time are you spending? How much time are you wasting? How much water and heat and energy are you wasting because that's your you time? And look, I love a hot shower, don't get me wrong. It is a decadent luxury. But I've personally found that if I'm not getting enough me time, my showers go longer, right? So just look at this in your life. Look at this, look at the time and energy. If you got kids and dogs, like what does that look like? How, how loving and compassionate are you being? Are you getting quality time with your kids in the morning? Or are you just like vomiting everything out and just saying, get in the car? And is the day setting the tone for a lifestyle that's gonna make your kids have these same problems later? right? How can we slow down? How can we create a little bit more spaciousness so we can enjoy each other's company, enjoy our morning together, and then leave the house with a smile on our face so that we feel like Tuesday doesn't suck, but Tuesday's another wonderful day where, and now I get to go to school, right? So think about these things. Think about all these little areas, like when you're brushing your teeth, where are you? right? I can spend time mindfully dealing with oral care and making sure that I've addressed all of the plaque and the biofilm and all these things that are happening in the mouth that would lead to decay and health issues and be really conscious and mindful of what I'm doing here or just think about work and kind of bang it out and spit and do another mindless thing. And again, set the tone for a mindless day. While you're brushing your teeth, be the person who's just there brushing their teeth and then move to the next thing. Don't start multitasking too much in the morning. One thing at a time, mindfully and consciously, whether it's on the toilet, whether it's picking out the supplements that you're gonna take that day, or you just dumping your supplements and scarfing them and running out the door, that's gonna set the tone for the rest of your day and today's gonna set the tone for the rest of your life. If we're gonna take our time back, it's gonna start with every little micro habit. So set out, I'm not saying go slow, right? Set out your supplements, understand what it is, understand why you're taking it, be grateful for the fact that you can take this and then consciously take it and be like, thank you so much, this is helping and healing my body. It's a very different tone and cadence than the one that we sometimes get into and that, you know, show me how you do one thing, I'll tell you how you do everything. Your morning routine will set the tone for the rest of your life. Hey, glad you enjoyed this masterclass. Make sure to check out our masterclass playlist to watch more powerful videos just like this one. I'll see you in the next video.